Hello, Venkat. Hey, Zane. I just wanted to touch base with you on a couple points today. One, uh, we're excited about your new book, uh, Programming Scala. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, it's been exciting to write the book. Uh, Scala is a fantastic language. Uh, I'm thoroughly excited about having the opportunity to write the book uh, for the Pragmatic Programmers. It just got released uh, a few days ago, so uh, right off the heart of the press. Yes, indeed. We're excited to carry it here on the, the No Fluff Just Stuff tour. Can you give people that aren't familiar with Scala just kind of a quick, you know, one-minute elevator pitch on what it is and why it's important for developers to know? Sure. You know, Java is statically typed, but not statically typed enough. And Scala is a very strongly statically typed language, mm -hmm. which means if you're developing a, a layer of your uh, architecture, your system, and you want to specify the type information, Scala is a great language for that. Uh, of course, one of the key strengths of Scala is where it can handle concurrency. Uh, one of the challenges with uh, Java itself as a language and the library which uh, Java is, that the first thing you do after starting a thread is learning how to limit it, how to make it synchronized. Whereas in Scala, you quite uh, take an opposite approach. You don't really share the state. You pass the state around between uh, diff different actors or threads, and then it makes it a lot more easier to manage concurrency. And that's one of the exciting things about Scala is how you can you know, handle some of these issues with concurrency. It's great strength in pattern matching. Uh, XML is a first class citizen in Scala, so there's a like, list of things that you can do really well in Scala. But the beauty is you don't have to give up your strong platform. You could be writing code on the JVM and mix Java and Scala to write code, and you can mix and match them wherever it makes sense. Very good. Well, overall, we see that uh, throughout time, you've become what uh, I think Neil Ford calls a polyglot programmer, right? You have embraced Groovy and, and Scala, and obviously Java as well. Why don't you kind of share with your audience as we move forward um, why it's important to at least be familiar, if not starting to master some of these languages as we you know, progress along? Sure. One of, one of the real reasons I really get excited about different languages is not really the syntax. The syntax is not the most exciting thing. It's the idioms of these different languages. So if you will, Java is a great language that for, for its time. It did a lot of things in the right way. It made things a lot simpler than what C++ did those days. Then of course, one, what I realized over time is the languages that you know really define your ability in terms of design. And if you only know one language, that fairly limits your ability to design your application. And as a, as a craftsman, you don't walk in with one tool and say, I'm going to use this one tool for everything I do. Mm -hmm. And there are strengths that Java brings to the table. There are strengths that language like JRuby and Groovy bring to the table. And then there are strengths like what Clojure and Scala bring to the table. And by learning these different languages, we can apply these different design techniques and capabilities in developing enterprise applications. Very good. So let's uh, move, uh, jump a little bit over to the, the Groovy side of the house. Now you also published a book uh, about Groovy as a whole, and there's a conference coming up here in the fall, Spring One uh, 2GX, which is a combo show about spring technologies and also Groovy and Grails. Why don't you kind of just share with the audience your impressions of the maturation in the Groovy and Grail space and how things are going there? Yeah, I'm certainly excited to uh, you know uh, be there in New Orleans when the conference does happen in October. Um, Groovy is a fantastic language. I've thoroughly enjoyed working with it and uh, you know, as a dynamic language, it is a language that is extremely powerful. One of the real nice things about Groovy is its strength in metaprogramming. That's what excited me into Groovy, drew me into Groovy itself. And, and Grails is a great framework for developing web applications. And with a combination of Grails and Groovy together, it really accelerates. And to me, at the end of the day, there's one thing I care the most about. It is programmer productivity. Mm -hmm. And languages like Ruby and Grail really give you that kind of productivity. And one of the nice things about Grails is you didn't drop everything and then start over fresh. It is built on Spring. It's built on Hibernate. It's built on certain things that have worked really well in the Java platform. So it brings the best of both worlds together. It gives you the strength and stability of what you already have. And then, of course, the flexibility and the power and productivity of the Groovy language itself. So I think it's a win-win situation to use a language and framework like that. Excellent. Well, thank you for your time, Venket. So we certainly enjoy seeing you on the No Fluff Just Stuff tour and uh, hope everybody comes out and joins us soon and uh, takes in a Venket session, something you don't want to miss. Thank you. It's a pleasure.